Hi, this is Malinki. Welcome to my channel, Voice of Malinki. Hope you all are safe and doing well in this pandemic situation. So today I will deliver the fifth lecture of COVID-19 lecture series. That is how COVID-19 vaccines are developed. What is the mechanism and how does this vaccine work in our body? Whether we are capable of combating the disease after taking this vaccine? And if you are new in my channel, please don't forget to subscribe my channel. And if you like my video, please do like, comment and share my video. Now, uh, what does a vaccine actually do? So, it provides us immunity against a particular pathogen. In this case, coronavirus. So, let's talk about the current COVID-19 vaccines. Currently, four types of COVID-19 vaccines are approved for us. The first one is RNA vaccine. It's a very cool concept, you know. So, what they are doing, they are synthetically producing mRNA in the laboratory. This mRNA is specific for viral spike protein. Actually, we have the spike protein or S protein sequence. So, from that, we can generate mRNA sequence too. Now, this mRNA is packed by a lipid nanoparticle. So, it is a lipid bilayer just like our body cell lipid bilayer membrane. So, this is the vaccine. Very simple thing, right? Now, you can ask me why don't we directly use this mRNA or why do we wrap it in a lipid shell, right? Okay. So, naked mRNA is quickly degraded by extracellular RNAs and is not internalized efficiently. Thus, we wrap it in a lipid shell just to preserve it from degradation. And it also facilitates cellular uptake. Now, when we take the vaccine, it interacts with our body cells. So, these could be any type of cell. Now, fusion between this vaccine and our body cell, it occurs that this fusion helps this mRNA to enter host cell cytoplasm. This mRNA binds host cell ribosome and translation occurs. And the spike proteins get generated. Now all nucleated cells in our body, all nucleated cells have a special type of receptor that is MHC class 1 receptor. This MHC class 1 receptor represents the S protein as an antigen. So, the S protein is just recently it is formed in the cytosol and it will be represented by MHC class 1 receptor. Okay. So, as an antigen, when this COVID antigen is presented in the cell surface, some cells named TC cell or T cytotoxic cells, they will be attracted they will be attracted towards this antigen MHC complex. Now, these T cytotoxic cells or TC cells have T cell receptors that directly interact with this antigen. And TC cells also contain CD8 molecules on the cell surface that will interact with MHC, class 1 MHC. So, CD8 of TC cell is interacting with MHC1 and TCR or T cell receptor is interacting with the COVID antigen just now, right? So, in this way, a tight complex get formed between antigen, MHC, TCR and CD8. Now, when this happens, TC cells gets proliferated and differentiated into two types of cells, affected T cells and memory T cells. So, next time when COVID-19 vaccine, we have now COVID-19 vaccine. So, next time when the coronavirus actually attacks us, these memory T C cells will be able to recognize the antigen via T cell receptor, right, TCR receptor and what will they do? They are now recognizing the virus and these effector T cells will destroy them. So, 
it is required to destroy virus infected cells to stop the spreading of the virus that's why this memory tc cells will recognize them through this tcr and affected t cells will kill or destroy those virus infected host cell now one more thing will happen our body contains some special types of cells these are apc or antigen presenting cells right so macrophages dendritic cells and b cells come under this apc now vaccine is not specific for any cell hmm. it will interact with these apc also these cells contain a special type of receptor that is mhc class 2 receptor along with mhc class 1 now when mrna enters the cell cytoplasm and spike protein is generated these antigens will be presented through both mhc class 1 and mhc class 2 receptors so class 1 receptors will function in the similar way that i have explained here immediately so these will function in a similar way but mhc 2 receptors they do an amazing thing now they recruit some t helper cells or t h cells these cells have tcr or t cell receptor in their cell surface so those tcr will bind mhc2 bound antigen and t h cells also contain cd4 molecule on the cell surface that will interact with class 2 mhc in this way a tight complex get formed between antigen mhc2 cd4 and tcr so when it forms t8 cells will do two things first of all they will get proliferated and differentiated into affected t8 cells and memory t8 cells these cells will be effective when coronavirus attacks us in future and the second thing it does it releases huge number of cytokines these cytokines stimulate b cells and help them to get proliferated and differentiated into memory b cell and plasma b cell now plasma b cells actually generate antibodies that are important to bind antigen and to destroy them so when we get that vaccine our body prepares all kinds of memory cells and everything so that will act very fast when we get infected by the virus in future second is adenovirus vector vaccine this vaccine is using a uh, adenovirus shell right adenovirus shell that does not contain the genetic material of adenovirus so we are using only the adenovirus shell so it contains the dna that encodes spike protein so as we know the spike protein sequence from it we can generate mrna and from that we can generate dna synthetically in the laboratory now this dna is enclosed by adenovirus shell and this is a non replicating that is they do not make any new virus particles but rather they produce only the antigen which elicits a systemic immune response in that case they will only generate spike protein as an antigen now when we take the vaccine fusion between these and host cell occurs and spike dna enters our cell so this is the dna it is entering our cell this dna directly enters host cell nucleus right so in in case of rna white rna vaccine what we have seen that the rna that enters the host cell cytoplasm it does not enter nucleus but in case of this this thing this dna that enters cytoplasm it will now go to nucleus right so it is now entering the nucleus 
and then it gets transcribed into mRNA that comes out of the nucleus and enters cytosol where it makes spike proteins. So when spike protein is made, the same mechanism happens that we have just seen in the last slide. So everything will be same now. Next is inactivated virus vaccine. So these vaccine consists of a viral particle that have been grown in cell culture and then they are killed using a method such as heat or formaldehyde. So the virus is now killed, that is inactivated. And the inactivated virus loses its disease producing capacity while still stimulating an immune response. So, we add an adjuvant in this case to create a stronger immune response. Because the inactivated virus itself is very weak to generate an immune response in our body. Now, when we take this vaccine, when we take this vaccine, inactivated virus is picked up by only antigen presenting cells. Within those antigen presenting cells or APC, antigen processing and presentation occurs that generates an antigen bound with the MHC and then it does the same thing I have already explained. Now, how this antigen, antigen processing and presentation occurs, that is a different stuff. I am not explaining it here. I will explain that in my immunity or immunology lecture. Next is subunion vaccine. In this case, we just add a particular antigen without introducing whole pathogen particle. So in this case, we are taking spike protein, but not the whole COVID-19 virus. So in this case, we also use the adjuvant to create a stronger immune response okay so just like inactivated virus vaccine this subunit vaccine also gets picked up by antigen antigen presenting cells or apc only with this apc antigen processing and presentation occurs that generates an antigen bound with the mhc and that it does the same thing i have already explained so these things were common. These things are occurring in all cases. Now as of April 2021, 13 COVID-19 vaccines are authorized for public use. Among them, we have 2 RNA vaccines, 5 inactivated vaccines, 4 viral vector vaccines and 2 protein subunit vaccines. In total, as of March 2021, 308 vaccine candidates are in various stages of development. Like they are in phase 1, phase 2 or phase 3 clinical trials. Hope you went through my last video regarding vaccine development. If not, please have a look. I am providing the link in the description box. Now, COVID-19 vaccine development was a challenge. The reason was our urgency to create a vaccine for COVID-19 very first. This urgency shortened the standard vaccine development timeline. Generally, clinical trial requires years to launch a vaccine. But this time, it was very fast. The rapid development and urgency of producing a vaccine for the COVID-19 pandemic may increase the risks and failure rate of delivering a safe, effective vaccines. And quick information regarding those 13 vaccines are listed here. If you wish to know, you can write down the list. Please stay with me for the next exciting video. Bye-bye.